once in a while you come across a product that really surprises you, and the Montec X1200 is definitely one of those for me. When Montec asked me to check out their new power station, I thought it might be interesting because of its rugged briefcase style design, but this thing has specs that rival the EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, and Anchor power stations and pulls way ahead in a few key areas. In this video, I'll let you know if it's really as good as it says. The X1200 has a 1280 watt hour LFP battery with 2000 watt inverter, 360 watts of regulated 12 volt output, 6 high power USB ports, 1200 watts of solar input, and a 1000 watt wall charger. All packaged into a beefy briefcase style enclosure that's built to handle a lot of abuse. They also sell expansion batteries to scale this up to up to 5 kilowatt hours of storage. There's another version of this with a 2 kilowatt hour NMC battery in the same size case. It has slightly less powerful specs and I won't be covering it in this video. This weighs 34 pounds and is definitely a bigger size suitcase, but the handle makes it very easy to carry one handed. In the box you get an AC wall charging cable, car charging cable, and MC4 to aviation adapter for solar charging. It has a two year warranty and will be on Indiegogo starting at $849. Normally I avoid crowdfunding projects, but this is from an established company so it's a bit less risky, and it seems more like a pre-sale event that everyone does these days. I'll include links in the description if you're interested. Let me run down the key features that really set this apart. First off, the rugged briefcase style design is very unique and great for taking it to environments where things might get a little wet and muddy, whether it's overlanding, taking this on a boat, or powering you through a natural disaster. It's not IP waterproof rated, but it's certainly able to handle the elements much better than any other power station I've seen. I really like the overall design with the display on top near the handle, AC outputs on one side, and wall charging, USB, and DC outputs on the other side, both behind latch doors with weather seals. The power button's on the right side of the unit and has a clicky metal button. You can also stand it on end and use it that way, which might be perfect in a truck. They use waterproof aviation style connectors for the DC input and expansion battery ports, which feels very solid. Inside it has 1,280 watt hours of high quality LFP pouch cells rated at 2,500 cycles to 80%. It has a bright color display that shows the state of charge, input and output power, and time to empty or full. The really cool thing is you can access all the advanced settings on the device by holding down the AC button for 10 seconds, and then you can navigate through this screen and set things like the AC and DC timeout, screen brightness, and more. That's awesome if you're away from civilization or just don't trust apps. Now you can set all of these in the smartphone app, but unfortunately it wasn't ready to test. I think it's really cool to be able to access these features directly on device, and that's pretty unique for a unit of this size. This has 360 watts of regulated 12 volt output, which makes it perfect for running DC appliances like a diesel heater or a compressor fridge in a camper van or RV. Most power stations only offer 8 amps of DC output, so this is a really unique feature. The standard DC ports are on the right side behind a door along with the USB and wall charger ports. There's a 10 amp cigarette port and a pair of 5521 ports. The high power 30 amp output port is next door with a weatherproof aviation connector. In my test, the cigarette port was regulated at a steady 12.4 volts all the way up to 10 amps or 125 watts. I was able to push it even further with my load tester all the way to 185 watts, which is enough to melt my cigarette plug so this thing is a DC beast. In my DC capacity test, I pulled 120 watts until I drained the battery. I measured 1,089 watt hours or 85% of the rated capacity, which is very good. I do wish it had a switch to turn off the DC ports. When you turn the unit on, the USB and DC both turn on. The 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter is more powerful than similar sized units. There's three AC receptacles on the left side of the unit behind a door. Next to those is a spot for the fan that's big enough to stow some cables when on the move. The button to turn the AC inverter is on the same side and has a nice clicky button. To put the AC output to the test, I plugged in a space heater and heat gun and pulled its rated 2000 watts for a full 20 minutes with no problems. Now fans were fairly loud at 51 decibels at full output, but when running smaller loads, the fans were as quiet as 33 decibels. I wanted to see how much surge power it could handle, so I cranked up the heat gun to 2500 watts and it ran that for 30 seconds. 
I then bumped it up to 2700 watts and it ran that for 10 seconds before overloading. So this has plenty of headroom, but that 4000 watt surge rating is probably for less than a second. In my AC capacity test, I connected my 250 watt studio light and pulled 1150 watt hours over five hours. That's 90% of its rated capacity, which is excellent and shows how efficient the inverter is. I then recharged it, turned on the AC and didn't connect anything. It used 1.4% or 18 watts per hour in standby losses, which is a bit higher than I'd like to see, but the DC and USB ports are always on, so that's a factor. You can buy a second unit and join them for 240 volt output, which is pretty wild for a small system. I unfortunately only had one, so I couldn't test this feature. The AC connector on the left side is used to connect these units together. This also has an ultra fast UPS feature, so you can connect essential loads up to 1800 watts, and when the grid goes down, it will switch over from wall power in just 10 milliseconds. And that's really quick compared to the 20 to 30 millisecond speed in other power stations. There's six USB ports, including two 100 watt and two 65 watt high power USB-C ports and a pair of quick charge 3.0 USB-A ports that output up to 24 watts. I plugged in two EcoFlow power banks that charged at 100 watts each and then added my Anker 737 and iPad Pro and pulled more than 275 watts from the USB ports, which is very impressive. Let's talk about charging next. There's an integrated wall charger on the right side of the unit. Just plug the included cable into the wall and it recharges at a very steady 1000 watts. I was able to charge this from 0 to 100% in just 1 hour and 18 minutes. When charging at full speed it was extremely quiet at just 37 decibels at 1 meter, which is pretty much silent. The included car charger connects to the DC input on the front and it has a very heavy duty cable and connector. In my test it charged at a steady 10 amps or 120 watts from my EcoFlow power station that was standing in as a car. There's a 1200 watt MPPT solar charge controller, which is huge for such a small unit. Best of all, it's not limited to 60 volts like pretty much every power station I review these days. It can handle up to 150 volts, which means you can plug in multiple panels in series or use larger residential panels like these to charge it up quick. In my test, I was able to get close to 900 watts into this with my mini rooftop array and recharge this in about one and a half hours. Lastly, it can support multiple expansion batteries to increase your storage to 5 kilowatt hours. Best of all, these are basically standalone DC power stations. Each battery is pretty much the same as the X1200, but without the AC inverter and a slightly less powerful wall charger. It includes the same USB outputs as the main unit, 30 amps of regulated DC output, but no cigarette port, a 600 watt wall charger, 800 watts of solar charging, and 100 watts of car charging. Because it doesn't have an inverter, the battery is smaller overall. I would have preferred it was the same footprint but thinner because it kind of bugs me that they're different sizes when stacked. The B1200 battery connects on the front through an aviation cable they include with the unit. I wish this had a low profile connection on the side. I even took the top off to see how it looked inside and everything was really well made with thick silicon wires and neat installation. One thing I did notice is that these wires were right against the rough metal edge of heat shields, but they told me they're aware of this and already changed it in the production units. Overall, I was very impressed with the Montec. For pros, it has impressive build quality, rugged water resistant design, expandable LFP battery, powerful AC inverter with 10 millisecond UPS, which is the fastest I've seen. 360 watts of regulated DC output, lots of high power USB-C ports, fast 1000 watt wall charging, incredibly powerful 1200 watt solar input with 150 volt limit, color screen with built-in settings menu, and a smartphone app. For cons, it's a crowdsourced project right now, so there's some risk there. I wish the main unit and expansion battery were the same dimensions and had a low profile connection on the side. It would be nice if this had dual DC inputs so you could charge from your car and solar at the same time. There's no built-in light or wireless charger. There's no touchscreen, so the settings menu is a bit of a chore to use. Overall, these are pretty small complaints. I'm surprised Montec was able to pack so many best-in-class features into this unit, and I came away very impressed. If you're looking for something rugged and portable for camping, marine applications, or emergencies, this is a great choice. All right, everyone. Till next time.